This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We're ending today's show in Texas, where some 200 tactical Border Force soldiers with the Texas National Guard were deployed in El Paso Tuesday. This comes after Texas erected a second border fence covered in razor wire Friday, and riot police attacked migrants who tried to pull it down. The federal spending bill Biden signed into law this weekend increases funding for ICE and Customs and Border Patrol. This also comes as Texas's harsh new anti-immigrant state law was put back on hold by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals last week, after the Supreme Court briefly lifted a stay, SB4 giving local police sweeping powers to arrest and deport anyone they suspect of entering the United States without authorization. For more, we go to El Paso, where we're joined by Fernando Garcia, founder and executive director of Border Network for Human Rights. Fernando, welcome back to Democracy Now! Can you talk about these 200 soldiers that have been deployed to the border, and also the whole debate over SB4 that almost went into effect if the Supreme Court had their way, then didn't, because of a lower court ruling? Hey, uh, good morning, Amy and Juan. Yes, th thanks for having me again. Um, listen, I mean, we have a very um, uh, uh, a situation at the border where, where the state of Texas is massively militarizing our community, especially here in El Paso, but also in, in the rest of the bo Mexico-Texas border. Just to give you a little bit of context already, uh, is that we have, the state of Texas has deployed 10,000 uh, state soldiers already, the National Guard troops in, in, our, uh, in, in, in our communities, especially along the, along the border. And now we, we see a, a, an increase of that militarization. And I think what very concerned, specifically uh, having special troops or special fro forces coming to El Paso with no training on how to deal with civilian population and much less dealing with immigrants and children and, and refugees. So I think this is just, uh, again, the effort of the state of Texas to uh, serve the federal powers uh, of uh, especially enforcing border enforcement laws or, in this case, immigration laws. So again, we believe that it's not only illegal what the state of Texas is doing, but also uh, it is violating uh, many people's rights, especially in El Paso region. And Fernando, could you talk about the, the decision by uh, President Lopez Obrador in Mexico? He blasted Texas's uh, SB4 law and said that Mexico won't accept anyone deported under that law? Yes, yes. And, and to, to be very clear, what the state of Texas has done is own immigration enforcement and deportation system, from actually allowing uh, the, uh, police officers, state, of, state police, ask immigration status, ask, show me your papers uh, questions, but also detain, arrest uh, uh, members in, in the community in Texas, especially Latino members. And then a, ma a, a state magistrate, a state judge would decide the deportation of that, uh, of that person that was arrested. And this is impacting not only migrants or refugees that are coming ac across the border, but also everybody in Texas, whether they're, you're in Houston, in Dallas, and Fort Worth, so everybody would be subjected to us before. So what, what President Lopez Obrador did is that, is that they, he said essentially that he's not recognizing the authority of Texas to actually enforce federal immigration laws and start deporting uh, either Mexicanos, Salvadoreños, or any other immigrants back to Mexico. So I think that was the right decision. But uh, however, the state of Texas is still building up this uh, immigration uh, state force. And also, uh, the, the new spending bill that President Biden just signed, it provides a massive increase to ICE detention infrastructure and for more money for the uh, Customs and Border Patrol and ICE. Uh, your response? Well, that is unfortunate, again, I mean, because we know what, what uh, some extremist politicians like Mr. Greg Abbott uh, is doing already in Texas, which, by the way, other states now are trying to mirror as before, uh, in Georgia and Louisiana. And, and, and the fact that the, the federal government doesn't have an alternative to that, doesn't have a, not only an alternative policy, but also an, an alternative narrative to this so-called invasion of criminals, the way that it make, uh, migrants are being portrayed 
it's ju it just add to the problems because you wouldn't, we don't need more detention centers in, in the interior or at the border. We, we don't need more border patrol as is in the DHS funding that was just approved. What we needed was more welcoming centers. We needed more accountability and oversight to to uh, federal law enforcement at the border, but also we needed for the federal government to stop, stop Texas, stop the governor of what they are doing in terms of um, enforcing illegally and unconstitutionally, as before, that is impacting Latinos, people of color, uh, migrants that are looking for asylum and protection. I mean, th what you saw in El Paso, the pictures of people running through the barbed wire, it is how desperate it, the situation is uh, at the border. Because what, these state soldiers, a bar, bar wire, and this state enforcement, it is illegally impeding migrants and families to ask, ask for asylum, which is is the right, it's an international right, it's, it's granted in the U.S. Constitution. So uh, I think that we expected uh, the administration to be more forceful in uh, in accomplishing uh, more humane and. Uh, uh, border and, and, and push for immigration reform. We, we have not seen that. Instead, we have seen more militarization and more resources for detention centers coming from the administration also. I know we want to thank you for being with us and ask you to stay after the show to conduct this interview in Spanish. Fernando Garcia, founder and executive director of the Border Network for Human Rights, based in El Paso, Texas. That does it for our show, Democracy Now!, produced with Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Dina Guzder, Sharif Abdel-Kudus, Messiah Rhodes, Nermeen Sheikh, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warrenoff, Tarina Nadura, Sam Alcofte, Maria Studio, Rabbi Karen, Hani Masood, and Hannah Elias. Our executive director is Julie Crosby. Special thanks to Becca Staley, John Randolph, Paul Powell, Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagara. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez.